are a part of me. You are the face of God. You are the face of God. I hold you in my heart. You are a part of me. You are the face of God. How could anyone ever tell you you were anything less than beautiful? How could anyone ever tell you you were less than whole? How could anyone fail to notice that your loving is a miracle? How deeply you're connected to my soul How could anyone ever tell you you were anything less than beautiful How could anyone ever tell you you were less than whole How could anyone fail to notice that your loving you how deeply you're connected to my Could anyone ever tell you you were anything less than beautiful? How could anyone ever tell you you were less than whole? How could anyone fail to notice that your loving is a miracle? How deeply you're connected to my soul. Welcome to Unity Church in Reading, everyone. Thank you very much. Would you like to stand and we can sing our welcoming song? We are all friends here. We are all. Hold 
you in our hearts the way you are. We are all friends here, dancing us aloud. There are no strangers once you walk inside that door. We welcome you to linger in this family of love and hold you in our hearts the way you are. And hold you in our hearts the way you are. And hold you in our hearts the way you are. Now let's offer our congregational blessing. Hold up your hands. We're going to bless each other. We love you. We bless you. We appreciate you. And we behold the Christ in you. Thank you, Anton and Laura, and welcome to everybody on this beautiful Mother's Day morning. Happy Mother's Day. We welcome each of you who are also joining us from home and so appreciate you being with us. Let us set ourselves in our seats, and if you're comfortable, close your eyes. And as we move into prayer, Knowing that we are connected to spirit and to each other. Knowing that spirit flows through us to the hearts of all. And on this beautiful Sunday morning, celebrating mothers, celebrating mother substitutes, celebrating those who have nurtured us, we are grateful. It is through love that we begin to know who we are. And as we walk through the world in love, we are the lights that we were born to be. So with love in my heart for each of you, and with great gratitude for this morning, I say thank you, God, and so it is. Amen. And Laura. Will you please light our Christ candle for us? Thank you. And with Laura, let us say together, we light this candle to remind us that the light of Christ lives within each one of us. I am the light of Christ. And now if you'll please join me for our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who is everywhere present, wholeness is your name. Your kingdom is come, your will is being done, in earth as it is in heaven. You give us this day and every day our daily bread, and you forgive us as we forgive. You leave us not in temptation, for you deliver us from error. For you are the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you. And now, Ken, our affirmations. special uh, treat today, those people who sit in the front, as a special treat for those sitting in the front, oh, yeah. I'm going to sit down and you can see over my head, <laughs> but it does come with a slight cost. The affirmations is an intention. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that energy of consternation when you couldn't see over me <laughs> and focus it into our affirmations. So we're going to do the affirmation for guidance this week. The affirmation for guidance. So let's think about that as an intention. And then we're going to join together in saying it. Together. 
I am a radiating center of light and understanding. And we are blessed to hold that affirmation for this entire week. And now let's join together in our uh, affirmation for Unity Church in Reading, our consciousness statement. Together, divine order is now manifesting in every phase of this ministry through its expanding prosperity, attendance, and by being a light on the path for others. And we are blessed as we join in our joy song, Heart of the Mother. This is a song by Michael Stillwater. I am one with the heart of the mother Yeah. 
Thank you. I like that song because it, Mother's Day is for everybody that way. <laughs> It's time for Al. It says daily word. The daily word will be right with us. Okay. Uh, you know, on a special day like this for me, uh, it gives a moment to reflect on my mother and uh, what, what special gifts she shared uh, with her family and her community in a small rural town in southern Indiana uh, where the mother of the household was expected to do not many things but most things from... Uh, ironing handkerchiefs, to mending things, to washing things, to supporting uh, a husband and three boys in a time where the culture was, was uh, very much biased toward the well-being of little boys and big men uh, as women uh, were faithfully and patiently by our side. So I celebrate my mother's love her patience, her perseverance uh, in helping our community uh, be a better place and our family to be stronger. She always said to me, Al, you know, I begin every day with a prayer that just says, God, use me where I'm needed. And uh, she put that into practice. So, Helen, we're thinking of you. Uh, motherly love, and our affirmation today is... I give thanks for motherly love. Would you join me, please? I give thanks for motherly love. God's perfect love, expressing through my mother, gave me life. God's love, wisdom, and strength guided her and all those who nurtured me as I grew. My words of praise and gratitude let me show my mother how much I appreciate her. When I wish to demonstrate my appreciation for my mother's example, I share the nurturing motherly love of God in my words and actions with all people. Remembering the times when my mother or another compassionate person listened patiently and shared encouraging words, I seek to be a caring, supportive presence. Recalling my mother's joy each time I learned something new, I share my skills and knowledge willingly when someone seeks my help. In gratitude, I share the gift of nurturing love. These thoughts were inspired by um, Isaiah uh, chapter 66, verse 13. As a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you. And this was his little surprise for Anton and Laura. They didn't know there was going to be a little break here. <laughs> Thank you, Al, for the daily word. And Al didn't know, but he set up perfectly what we're going to do right now. And during the week this week, Ken told me about a larger Unity Church that was going to have an opportunity for people to speak just one, one word or one sentence about their mother, what their mother meant in their life, or a mother of the heart, what they meant in their life. And so, I'm going to model for you so that you really get one sentence. And so I'm going to say, my mother taught me the value of beauty. Is there anyone else who would like to say anything? Anton. 
my mother encouraged my creativity. Anybody else want to say anything about their mother? Courtney. Wonderful. Anybody else want to say anything about their mother? She did. Yes, she did. Yes, Kathy. Okay. So we have strength. We have beauty. We have kindness. Yes, Ken. My mother let me be who I am. Mm. Mm -hmm. It is. Yes, Marnie. Okay, kindness, creativity, anybody? Yes, John. Yes. So isn't it beautiful hearing these words from all of us who are older adults now and still remembering what our mothers, how they cherished us, that which they did. So thank you for that sharing. We'll all hold this in our hearts as we move through our morning. And now, Kathy, you have meditation today, don't you? Twyla has meditation today. Great. Thank you. Now will you join me in a silent meditation. If you're comfortable, close your eyes. Relax in your chair. And know with me that God is love. We speak of the love of our mothers and what they gave us. We know that we have been told the Father and I are one. And we have been told that God is love. So know in your hearts, go to that heart space where love lives within you. And join with me in feeling that love, the love for everyone the love for our mothers, our fathers, those who came before us and helped us to grow into the person we are today. And as we enter into the silence, allow yourself to overflow with the feelings of love and joy. And into the silence.
And as we return to the room, we bring our consciousness, our spiritual consciousness with us, feeling our hearts so totally full of love. And as we do, we think of those who have asked for prayer and we hold them in our hearts, knowing the wellness and wholeness and the solution to every problem is through God. And we think of each person who is personally special to us. And may we speak their name out loud, knowing that God is bringing them special blessings, special wholeness. And as we speak their names out loud, we know. And I ask that you now speak your own name. And as you do, you are anchoring in all of the names that have been asked. And we give thanks for these few moments where we could go within, knowing that it is possible at any time. And so it is. Given the theme of today's talk, we have a song for you um, that is about loss and redemption and finding oneself. And it is in Spanish. And Carolyn, Reverend Carolyn, has asked that we just enjoy the feeling of the song and not worry about a direct translation. So just sit back and let, let those feelings flow. absolutely beautiful thank you thank you Carolyn and I forgot to mention that it's like 400 years old 400 <laughs> years old mm -hmm. and Laura was um, when she mentioned that she said do you want us to give a translation or not 
And you know, I think that sometimes when we hear the translation of something written in Spanish or a different language, at least I get so caught up in the words and how they fit with the music that it takes away from that feeling. And I don't know about you, but I was totally carried away. So thank you so much. I know that one time when I was in Portugal, I had never been to um, a Catholic mass before. And I went to midnight mass at this huge ancient Catholic cathedral. And the whole thing was in Latin, and I didn't understand any of it, but it was the most sacred, sacred service. And so I think that for me at least, sometimes words can get in the way of the feeling. So that was very beautiful. Well, had I been more aware and recognized that today was Mother's Day, I don't think I would have chosen Jesus' second message from the Sermon on the Mount. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. But I sat with it. I thought, well, I wonder, maybe I should change it, maybe this or that. And when I sat with it, I decided, no, it is absolutely perfect for Mother's Day. Because when I'm feeling distraught, when most of us are feeling distraught or having challenges in our life, when we were young, maybe we went to our mothers for comfort. Maybe we went to an auntie or to a grandma. But women, that mother love that women give, can carry us through those times when we're seeking comfort in our moments of sorrow. And so just like Spirit does sometimes here, the beginning of at the end, I guess, of April, and I thought of talks for this month, and I didn't realize today was Mother's Day. And at least in my mind, it actually turned out to be perfect. So here we are on Mother's Day, and talking about mourning, and talking about comfort, and talking about returning to that place of joy. As human beings, we are always going to experience trials and tribulations. Jesus said, in this world, you will have trouble. But then he also went on and told us how we can walk through our troubles to the kingdom, to that joy that rests on the other side. Each of us will experience sorrow, and loss. It is part of the human condition. And when we stuff that down, thinking that maybe we shouldn't feel those feelings, that maybe it's not spiritual to feel those feelings, they will come out later in a different way. They may come out as anger. They may cut up, come out as a need to over-control, as if we could control all of those things that happen in our life or they can come out as depression. There are those new thought writers, especially some of the ones that are older, who thought that if we knew the truth, the truth with capital T, that we could avoid experiencing what we as humans do, trials, tribulations, sorrow, and loss. Listen to what Emmett Fox says in his um, classic book, The Sermon on the Mount. And when he talks about the second beatitude, blessed are those who mourn, for, so, so, for they shall receive comfort. This is what he says. Family troubles, quarrels, and estrangements, sin and remorse, and all the rest need, need never come at all if we will seek first the kingdom of God and right understanding. But if we do not do so, then come they must, and for us this morning will be a blessing in disguise, for through it we shall be comforted. And by comfort, the Bible means the experience of the presence of God, which is the end of all mourning. Now, where I agree with Emmett is that when we seek the comfort 
when we receive the comfort of God, we do move through mourning to that place of joy or peace or gratitude. But I do not believe with him that if we understand the truth with the capital of T, that as long as we're in human form, we can avoid suffering and trials and tribulations. I really looked carefully through the parts of the Bible that I know, and I went onto the internet and looked through things that other people have written in the Bible, and I never once found a place where Jesus said, do not feel your human feelings. Do not feel your emotions. Do not pretend that there is no grief on this human plane. What he did tell us is that he was in the world, but not of the world. Which to me means that we live our human existence, but that that is not what our higher power is. That there is something greater than that. And as we study the truth, and as we as truth students walk our truth path, that we will become more in alignment with spirit and that we may not be quite so rocked by the things that happen on this human plane. Jesus, our way shower, lived fully in his divinity and he also lived fully in his humanity. We are told that the enemies of Jesus, those who were not on his same page, called him a glutton and a drunkard. They compared him with John the Baptist, who had very strict rules about what he was to eat and what he was to drink. And those were not rules that Jesus chose to abide by. Regardless of the truth of how Jesus ate and drank, we do know that he enjoyed his human existence. He turned the water into wine at Cana. He asked the children to come to him on when feeding the 5,000. He loved, he laughed with his disciples. Can you see Jesus sitting around campfires at night with these fishermen that were his disciples saying, Om? No, I'm sure he laughed and they told stories and they felt joy with each other and they patted each other on the back and they loved. Jesus taught us that we were to be fully human on this plane while also learning the truth that there is a way that we can do that and live in the kingdom of God. So we know that Jesus experienced his humanity, and part of that was experiencing grief. The story of the raising of Lazarus from the dead comes from the book of John. And in John, when Jesus learned of his dear friend Lazarus and his death, even though he knew that he could raise Lazarus from the dead, he began weeping the story says. And the shortest verse in the King James Version of the Bible comes from that story, and it simply says, Jesus wept. He was just like you, and he was just like me. When confronting sadness on this plane, he wept. He felt that. After he wept, he prayed. He prayed to the Father, knowing that this was part of the plan, and that then he would say to Lazarus, Lazarus, come out. That was his work in that moment. In the Garden of Gethsemane, before the crucifixion, this is what the story in Matthew tells us. Jesus became agitated and grieved. And this is what he said to his disciples, actually to his, his four friends, um, Peter, they were three, Peter, James, and John went with him to the garden. He said, 
I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here. Stay awake with me. And going a little further, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not what I want, what you want. So Jesus felt his pain, he felt his grief, he felt his despair, his anguish, his agitation. And he spoke to his friends about that, but then went into prayer. We know that Jesus liked his life, he loved his life, because he said, if possible, take this cup from me. But do what must be done not what I want to have done. The name of our talk today was Gifts Received from Mourning. So if we accept that on this human plane the are, there is going to be grief and we are going to mourn, it is part of the human condition, what might some of the gifts from that be? What are some of the takeaways that we can have from this second beatitude? Those that mourn shall be comforted. I think that the first gift is that it shows us how deeply we love life and how deeply we love those in our lives when we mourn loss. What did Jesus say? If it's possible, take this cup from me. To me, that says that he liked his life. He loved being with others. He maybe didn't think that his time was finished. Who knows? We don't know what was going through his life, in his mind. But we do know that he said, if possible, take this cup from me. So I think that we can learn the value and the joy of being human beings of having love, of having others. So that is our first takeaway from grief, from mourning, is that it, it shows us the preciousness of life. A second takeaway, a second gift that I think from mourning is that it gives me the opportunity to be comforted. Jesus didn't keep his grief to himself he talked to his friends about it. He talked to Peter, James, and John. He said, I am grieved. I know that when I'm feeling sad or sorrowful or I'm in a condition where I'm feeling filled with angst, I choose someone that I love and that I trust, and I share my story because I know it will be heard and that I will not be judged. I know that I want to choose somebody who will listen to my story and not tell me it's going to get better. When I want to be comforted, and I suspect that when you want to be comforted, it is not the time for somebody to say, it's okay, or it's going to get better, or just give it time, or even some who say, you know, it's really not as bad as you think. Those aren't things we want to hear, are they? We want somebody to hold us in that space of love because we know the desire that each of us has for comfort. A third gift from mourning is that we grow in compassion. When I have grieved, when I know somebody else is in, grieve, in grief, it's very difficult for me to not to have compassion. It's not a time for judgment, for judging how they are grieving or how long they are grieving. I have heard had persons say to me about things, oh, you know, it's been a year and she's still grieving, or it's been a year and he's still experiencing the loss. We don't know how long grief takes. But if I have grown in compassion through my own grief, I can accept however another person grieves. 
And a final takeaway for me from the beauty, from the gifts of grieving is that I gain a broader understanding of life. I recognize that in this human existence, everything is impermanent. There is nothing on this plane that doesn't leave, that doesn't go away, that doesn't ultimately die. And what this does is it helps me to love and enjoy and appreciate what is here, but know that my reliance needs to be on God. That greater power that is always telling us the kingdom of God is neither here nor there. The kingdom of God is within. And when we can rest in that kingdom of God, then we can enjoy all of the beauty. And in fact, we can enjoy it more knowing that it is impermanent. So as we think today about grief and about mourning and about Mother's Day and about love, let us recognize the joy of being able to support others. Let us remember that in the book of Ecclesiastes, we learned about balance. In Ecclesiastes, it says, there is a time for weeping and a time for laughing. There is a time for sorrow and a time for dancing. It is all part of this human life. And as we treasure that, knowing that we are always growing more into the greater understanding that we are spiritual beings having a human experience, we can do so always on that path toward greater knowledge of God, toward greater knowledge of good. So let us follow the pattern of Jesus, our way shower. Let us love, let us laugh, let us enjoy eating and drinking and merriment. And let us know that we are in this world, but not of this world. That there is that greater God within the kingdom of heaven that is ours in any given moment. So happy Mother's Day to each of you. Know that in grief there is always the other side, that side of joy. And may you have more joy this coming week than grief. I love you all. Carolyn. It was an interesting take on our traditional Mother's Day. And as we go through the week and uh, think about everything you said, it'll mean more and more to us. So why don't I ask the ushers to come forward? And there is a time of giving, and that is the time we have reached in our service. So let us hold our offering in our hands and let's bless them together by repeating, Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And I am blessed. We're going to do a song that we wrote in memory of our friend Eric Berglund, who was a wonderful musician and spread joy to everyone. He deeply believed in angels, and I tried to incorporate that a little bit into this song.
cosmic journey deep within the mountain masters call us by our name welcome home spirit welcome home giving welcome home living presence of our Welcome home, Spirit. Welcome home, Blessing. Welcome home, Living Presence of our love. Presence of our love. in a lifetime a doorway opens inviting us to give the best we have a cosmic journey into the heavens going home to the love welcome home some birthdays today. <laughs> so, Anton and Laura, would you announce the birthdays, please? Well, we know it's Sharon's birthday today, and does anyone else have a May birthday? Carolyn? And there's probably some of our online so viewers who have today. May birthdays. Wow. And we'd like to sing for you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you, and many more. Well, I am certainly glad that you told the little bird that today was your birthday. That's great, wonderful. So, on this beautiful day, on this day that Sharon was born, a blessing to this world. We accept these tithes and offerings with great gratitude, knowing that they have been given from a generous heart for the good of all that is transpiring here in UCIR, in the community of Reading and beyond. So with great thanks in my heart and with great love for each of you, I say thank you, God, and so it is. Amen. Thank you. Okay, so before I announce the announcements, I would just like to say that you noticed that we did the affirmations a little bit differently this morning. We did one <laughs> affirmation instead of the four. And... <laughs> You know, we have been so open to feedback since we've opened up again because it's the perfect time to make some changes. And one of the things that we've been told by many more than one person is that it just felt very word-heavy at the top of our service. And also that 
when we do something like just read one after me affirmation after another after another, it feels like a rote process and that we are not taking it to heart. So as you know, we have taken out a few things from the top of our service, and we've decided that for the affirmations, we will do one a week. And each time, <laughs> you know two of the people that have suggestions for us. <laughs> Each time before the affirmation, Ken will give just a little short introduction so that we can really begin to contemplate and then take it to heart. You will also notice that you received today a little card that had just a, not a summary of the talk, but just some little words and then an affirmation at the end. This was our, our Diana Stockwell's idea, and she made the cards for us, and we all agreed that it was a great idea. So thank you, Diana. <laughs> With this size, you can put it on your windowsill or have it on your desk, and it'll just be something to the, for the week to sort of, oh, yeah, this is what's what we did on Sunday. So we hope these work nicely for you. Finally, as you know, several weeks ago, actually it was a month ago, we changed how we were doing our prayer for protection, and we were doing it with a line and then a different line stating that it was us who were holding the light. We were not terribly pleased with the flow of that, so this morning we're going to try it in a different way and give us some feedback about what you think. We are going to say the first line that's familiar to all of us. For example, the light of God surrounds us. And then Diana is going to give a response. And then we will say the second phrase. So just sort of rest into it and see how it feels to you. And then let me, let Ken, let Diana, let any of us know so that we can just create this service so it's comfortable for you. And finally, men. If you have a woman in your life that you would like to give a flower to on this special day, take one off of the back counter before you leave. We will be open on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday this week from noon until 4. Uh, Ken and I will be out of the office on Thursday afternoon for Ed Ewing's memorial, which, if you're interested, is going to be at the Veterans Cemetery. But Kathy will be here. The office will be open. And Kathy will be leading meditation for us that day, too. We do offer prayer before and after service. And, of course, during the week, if you'd like to come in, our prayer chaplain this morning, Twyla, will be at the back here. So if you'd like prayer from her, please do. Ken and I are always available. Kathy's available. Do you know how old Ed was? Ed was 100 years old. Wow. Ken, uh, Ed had a mission. His mission in life was to live to be 100, and he stated it over and over. He was going to live to be 100. He turned 100 this past July, and he made his transition in January. So, good ripe age. Uh, the service is at 12.30 noon, at 12.30 noon, out at the Veterans Cemetery. Uh, I guess that was redundant, wasn't it, Kay? <laughs> <laughs> See, I have all these people to keep me on track. First, I forget it's Mother's Day, so we talk about grief. <laughs> yeah, okay. uh, good grief, yes, good grief. Um, our spring tea is on June 19th. We've been announcing that, and we will announce it. It's our first gathering, our first fundraiser since COVID. We are collecting things already for the silent auction and for the raffle, and you can just put your things in the kids' room. You can put them on the table, and then we'll take care of doing what needs to be done. The group meetings this week are the 12-step programs, which are listed on the board in the hallway, and our Course of Love, which is on Wednesday mornings at 10 o'clock with Reverend Ken facilitating, and A Course in Miracles on Thursday mornings at 10 o'clock. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a sort of a co-facilitated group with our primary facilitator being Nina. Nina. <laughs> her last name is really hard to say. It's sort of like Warna Mundy. <laughs> Uh, please check the bulletin boards for any more information. 
We look forward to seeing you next Sunday when Ken is going to speak on the beatitude of being meek. And uh, if anybody is interested in the memorial service, again, it's on Thursday at 1230 out at the Veterans Cemetery. So thank you for being with us this morning. Have a wonderful, wonderful week, and we'll see you next Sunday. And now our peace song. And I'm assuming we're standing. <laughs> we're probably not holding hands yet. We can... <laughs> protection the light of God surrounds us we are the light of God the love of God enfolds us we are the love of God the power of God protects us we embrace that power the presence of God watches over us we live our lives in God's present presence wherever we are God is, and so it is. So give us your feedback. We love you all, and we'll see you next week. Happy Mother's Day. Yes, happy Mother's Day. And happy birthday. Thank you. Happy, happy birthday. No, my.